Hi, welcome to the channel Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today I'll be repairing this RT3151 cassette deck by Sharp. It's pretty much the same as the RT3858 and I think a lot of the models from Sharp actually use the same mechanism in this uh, cassette. So if you've got a similar problem uh, with it not playing, not, would, not being able to forward fast or rewind, chances are it's going to be pretty much the same. So I'm going to show you a little video of me explaining how to undo this and everything. Then you're going to come back to me and hopefully you're going to explain a couple of bits there just a little bit better if I can. You know, so I did film me doing it and um, it didn't really come out that clear. My hand was in the way and everything so I'm going to try and explain it a slightly different way. But hopefully you get the gist of it and it'll help you if you've got this machine or one similar to repair it. Now first of all, I did miss out taking this lid, this top off. It's fairly straightforward. You've got six screws each side of this unit. You're, there are only six screws there on each side. Just undo all six of them and this top will come up. Anyway, let's go and see the video of me actually doing it. Okay, so let's uh, start this process. This is what I bought first of all. Uh, this is the gear I bought off of eBay. This is 3D printed and it come, looks like it's got an old going all the way through it, but it hasn't. You have to drill that bit out by hand, which I'll come to a bit later on. It's just nice and slowly you do that. Here's the... Uh, hose I'm going to use it's like a, a rubber tube elastic band uh, for slingshots it says here uh, this is what I'm going to use for the uh, take up rubber uh, so that's that there I'll come to that a bit later on exactly how I did that but that, that's that now I've got these two items fitted in it all works everything else put the gear in and got it all going nicely uh, and lo and behold I was on eBay doing something else and searching around the net and one thing led to another and all of a sudden I come across this uh, which is the old kit and it actually includes the um, take uh sorry it includes the idler tire as well this kit here. and my one's quite worn it's about halfway down if not a bit further than halfway down so i could probably do with getting that idler tire but as you can see that kit there is 27 pounds 71 including postage to the uk so it works out a bit more expensive than my uh 299 rubber uh slingshot i'm going to use and the uh, gear i bought for five pounds i mean that works out eight this works out an extra 20 pounds you, you may feel like you want to get this this is the, you know I suppose the proper parts maybe you could say but the parts I've got work fine okay so now it don't matter which parts you bought my ones or this one you're gonna to have to do this to get them fitted so first of all let's get the cassette deck on the bench and there it is and we're going to take these front screws holding that little like a uh, clear plastic front of the cassette so that's come out there as you can see now you have obviously took the front cover off the front cover of the actual units got six screws each side take them off that you'll, you'll see them you're not going to miss them uh, take them off and just pull the front you know, the actual unit cover off say the front cover is the top cover actually take the top cover completely off and they're going to be presented with these uh, four screws here in the circles in the yellow circles there's four screws forget about the arrow for a second so take them four screws off now this arrow looks like it's going nowhere no screw there or nothing but it uses a screw and it's deep down it's about six inches deep down into the unit you'll see it. it's the only screw in that vicinity uh, so take that screw out a nice long screwdriver magnetic screwdriver come in handy for that once that's out we're going to undo this connector here then we're going to undo this connector here you'll find them on the board easy enough then we're going to undo this connector here which is on top of the actual work cassette mechanism and this connector here which is back down on the board you'll find them easy enough okay once we've done that we're going to undo this uh, spring here that connects this rod and this recalled playback slider switch just want to undo one end of that spring and as you can see there it is undone we're going to flick the old unit over and undo these two screws here now there, everything's going to be nice and free, ready to pull the unit out. Now once you pull this unit out, the tip here is to put, either push it in from the bottom, like where these piano screws are, push push that inwards so it's going into the actual casing, or put your hand around the back and pull the unit out from the bottom first, not the top, because it's going to start getting jammed. You want to pull the bottom of this cassette unit out, like i.e. where the piano keys are, put your hand you know, around the back of them, so to speak, and pull the unit out from the bottom, and it'll come out, and you'll have a unit like that on your bench. Now, we're going to undo these three screws here, and, and that lifts that board up, and then we're going to undo these three screws here, and you're going to present it there with, you know, if you want to put a new band and uh, a new belt on, should I say, you can put a new belt on. I've left my belt, it seems to be working okay. A new belt kit is that, and the counter belt, I think it is, is about £20. But anyway, I left it as it is, it's working fine now. That's where you want to put your new belt, as you can see, that's nice and easy, but you want to pull this silver, um, I forgot the name of this cog now, I'm halfway through the thing and you know what I'm on about, this great big silver wheel with one, two, three, four written on it, you want to pull that the flywheel, you want to pull that out completely, that'll just pull out hopefully, if it's stiff just give it a bit of a tug uh, and if you've already still got your rubber connected to the other end 
and it's not you know it's not doing the job and you're going to replace the rubber it's going to take quite a bit of pulling because you're going to have to force that through it through the rubber that's already stuck to it kind of thing so it can take a bit of uh, forcing but if that rubber's melted away or it's disappeared it's disintegrated then that wheel should you know that wheel should come out fairly easy and once you do that i'm going to show you uh, not here, but uh, when I go back to me, you can see me. I want to show you exactly how I kind of uh, put the rubber back onto that uh, onto that flywheel. How I actually did that. Anyway, so that's the wheel for the time being. We're going to kind of stop the wheel there, and we're going to go over to the front, and we're going to take these two screws out here to get to the front. Now, once we took them out, you can see you're going to get kind of present, presented with this. Now, this yellow arrow shows the new cog I've just put in. Now, that's the new cog, but obviously, if yours disintegrated or disappeared you're going to have nothing there and that's where your new cog goes okay we're going to have a look there you go there there's the new cog uh, i bought off this chap off of ebay it didn't have the old in it i've used that tool there that's like a two millimeter drill like i say with like an x end on the end of it so you can put it into one of these kind of like grip things that you can do screws up with or, or even an electric drill but you, you don't want to do that you want to do it all by hand just put that thing that cog nice and flat on a table or something like that uh, and hold it upright the drill like try and keep it parallel like level and just drill through very slowly I've done about a quarter of the way through then I lifted the drill up cleaned the drill head then went back in to so about halfway down lifted the drill back up you know all by hand it's very slowly like it's really you know you're really going around slowly I'll show you a little bit of a demo at the end of the video okay so that's done uh, and obviously you, you, you're going to put it back uh, in its place there with the yellow arrow Right, okay, so uh, once that's done, now this is the bit I'm gonna show you, uh, we're gonna come back to me, I'm gonna kind of zoom in and do it up so it's quite big, you can see exactly what's happening uh, here. I'm gonna use some props here, I'm not gonna actually use the main thing because it's a bit fiddly, hard to get the camera in to maybe explain what I'm doing. I'm gonna try and use a couple of props and try and give another explanation here. But there it is, you can see that yellow arrow, that's the bit that's normally disintegrated or uh, disappeared or, you know, this is the bit you're replacing with that latex kind of uh, slingshot uh, rubber we're gonna you know use to put in there that's where we're gonna put it that's where it's gonna go so I'm gonna tell you all about that uh, now as we go back to me this part of the video I'm just gonna show you if I can uh, how I drilled the old in the cog now if you put the cog on a flat surface I haven't got the cog here now obviously and I've got a spare one to show you I'm gonna try and demonstrate my hand just if you put it on a table or something like that uh, put it on a flat surface and obviously you've got to try and grip it or get someone to grip it for you. It's very small, you may want to put a little pair of pliers, don't pinch it too much because obviously the, the teeth on it, you don't want to ruin the teeth. So maybe just get someone to hold it. You may be able to hold it yourself for your thumb now or something like that. But get the cog, and my hand's going to be the cog now. This is the drill bit, this ain't it, the actual one. It's a lot smaller than this, just a two millimetre drill bit with the little X on the end. It just makes it easier for you to hold on to. And these are fairly cheap. You get a set of these for about three pound here in the UK on eBay. Uh, yeah, you've got the cog. And all I've done is find a dead centre now. You want to keep the, like say, the cog dead flat. You want to keep this. You don't want it going in at angles. You want to keep it dead straight by eye as much as you can. And all I've done really was I just come down to it and I just turned it a few turns, a little bit, you know, a bit of pressure on it, a few turns, and took it up. And you'll find a few little bits of debris like it's cut into the uh, cog there on the drill. Just clean that away. Then exactly the same. And I've done this about five or six times. And eventually doing that, doing it a few turns, putting it out, a few turns, putting it out you'll get through to the other end of the cog. Now, I don't think if you get an electric drill or anything faster, you went done that. You may be all right, but I, I've heard that these cogs can break, you know what I mean? They, you know, it's 3D printed. Uh, they're still strong, but, you know, a bit careful. So I just took my time. It only takes a couple of minutes, and you'll get through to the uh, other end, and then, then that cog's got the old in it required. Okay, this part of the video, I'm going to try and explain how to get that piece of rubber, you know, your O's you've cut up to sit down. This has got to be seven millimeters. Cut this O's to seven millimeters. So it's, it's still, this is a bigger part, just so you can see it, but it's, it's fairly small, seven meters, seven millimeters, this is about a centimetre, but seven millimetres, so you've got your little bit there ready to slide onto the capstan spindle as it comes through the plate. You'll get what I mean in a minute, hopefully, when I try and explain it. Uh, I did do a video of it, and it, I just couldn't get the angles, my hands were in the way, everything was in the way, because it was very, very fiddly. You, you know, if you've got big thumbs and fingers, you may want to get someone else to do it, and maybe while you give them an hand, they just push the uh, rubber into position for you. Now, one good thing about this rubber is it's it's, it's quite um, narrow in the middle, I think about a millimetre, something like that. So when you're pushing that spindle through, that capstan spindle, if we can just imagine this for the time being, there being the capstan spindle, uh, this is the flywheel at the end here, and this is the capstan spindle. As you push it through, it's, it's really tight, so you're gonna have to give that a good push, and eventually it'll pop out the other end, go through the rest of the uh, hours in, in the unit, and uh, it'll sit down, 
on the unit, something like that. And uh, once you've got it on there, give it a spin, make sure it's spinning freely, uh, just in case you've cut it a bit too long. Well, if you cut it the right length, seven millimeters, it will spin nice and freely. Now, I'm gonna try and show you how to do this now. Uh, it, like I say, I did do a video, and it didn't come out no good. So once it was done, I didn't want to put it all again because that does stick on there nice and tight, really grips it. Now, I don't know if you go and get the original rubber, the proper rubber that goes on it, where you have to glue that or not, I don't know. You'll, you'll find out if you push the original rubber on, uh, you know, if you go and buy a replacement, the exact uh, original kind of thing. If you push that on and you spin it round and that, that rubber stains still, that's no good. Obviously, you're going to have to put a bit of glue to hold it in, but hopefully it's the same as this and it's going to grip the caps and spin them really tight. And it does really grip it tight, it, you know, it's, it's really, really tight, which is nice, which is handy. Right, now, if you can imagine, I, I, I haven't gone mad here, uh, trust me, and uh, I ain't been watching too many Blue Peter episodes or anything like that. I'm trying to make it uh, so you can understand what's happening. Now, this is the base plate <coughs> of your cassette deck, so your spindles are sticking out, all your gears and everything, if you can imagine, it's on this base plate sticking out. You've got your two coals and everything. So this is going to be the capstan, this screwdriver is going to be the capstan. If you can imagine this black thing, yeah, this handle is the, the big flywheel at the bottom. So I'm gonna poke this through. So this, you know, once you took it out, once you took the unit out, once you took it all apart with that you know, bit I just showed you, you're gonna have the capstan in your hand, give it a clean and etc. The, 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 this is a nice good clean. Uh, take off any rubber that was already on there, it's disappeared, uh, disintegrated, etc. Uh, so what we're gonna do, if I just bring this picture up here, I just want you to imagine a few things here. Right, yeah, if you just look at the yellow, yellow arrow first, if you come back to me, if you can imagine this is what that yellow arrow was. Okay, now if you uh, look at the blue arrow now, and the blue arrow is the caps and spindle, which is this, my screwdriver. So if you could just imagine that, this will hopefully help you. And the final part is you look at the uh, red arrow. Now the red arrow is indicating this, like the, 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 the rubber you're going to put on there, which I've magnified up to that. Okay, so a toilet roll. So hopefully you're going to get the drift of what's happening here. Okay, so you know, under normal circumstances, the capstan, when you push it in, the spindle will come all the way through, it'll go all the way through the housing, and uh, it'll be like that basically. With this, this part here is you know, it goes through, and this is where you want the rubber to fit kind of in there. And obviously, you can't just push the rubber on there because the spindle's in the way, so you've got to get the rubber in between this. The top bit here, which was a yellow arrow a minute ago, and there. Now, the way to do this, no, you're going to suss it out yourself now, is that's going to stay in this position there. Hopefully, you can see all this. That's, you know, just imagine that's still there, even though I'm going to take it away because I've only got one pair of hands. So, that's still there. So, as you're pushing the capstan through, hopefully, you can get the angles. You've just got to slide the rubber into position. It's a bit fiddly, but you can do it. And it'll go through the rubber, it'll go through that top hours in so to speak and you have something like that now as long as there's a little gap in between this and this this is going to spin around nice and freely and don't forget it's tight to that spindle so when you spin the spindle that's going to spin around if you've got if you cut that too long it's going to be clamped so it's going to be really hard to turn so that's no good so you know just see how it freely it turns around now what i will say is is when you push this through onto that hose that i'm using it's gonna feel really tight. You're gonna think this is gonna, you know, this doesn't feel right, but it is, it grips it so tight. You know what I mean? It really does, it's really nice and tight. So you're gonna to have to give it a good weather, a good push through, and eventually it will come through. And that, that rubber is not gonna slip or anything like that. That is stuck on there now. It is really, really tight. So hopefully that's explained how to put that rubber onto your capstan uh, spindle. Right, that's it. So hopefully it's all, you know, you've done that, um, and everything's working now. You've you fitted the cog, you fitted that rubber, and that lo and behold, you should be able to uh, get the deck working as it should do. So there you go, and the rewind there, and back to giving it a little play. Nice big meters, and I do like the meters on this. Okay, so the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.